In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own warning system that will have slash commands and subcommands such as a list, add, and remove. If you're watching this video, I assume you already have a bot set up, but if not, go ahead and write down this code as well as check out the first video in the playlist linked down below. But for those of you who already have a project and a bot, let's jump right into the warning system itself. The first step is to make your own commands and models folder because we will have a single warn command as well as a MongoDB schema, which is going to hold all the information we need to store. In this case, this would be a user ID, a guild ID, the reason, and a staff ID, all of which are required strings. So instead of repeating myself four times, I just stored that inside of a variable, which has the type of string and required is true. Now it's important to understand how I'm going to export this. I'm first going to try and access the model from the models array, or I'm going to create it by calling the model method. This model method will store this model inside of the models array internally. And so with the system, we're essentially going to first try to return an existing model, but if it doesn't exist, then we're going to create one. And this system here is useful if we're going to be importing this in multiple places. So diving into the warn command, this video will assume you're using the warn off keys commands package, but if you're not, you can use the correct command syntax that I'm sure you're already used to. So within here, I'm going to simply export my own object and because I'm using TypeScript and one of keys commands, I'm going to export this object as an instance of I command. But if you're not using TypeScript or if you're using a different command handler, then you do not need to include this. Now, as you can probably see here, I have a TypeScript example and a JavaScript example, but the contents inside of the curly braces or inside of the object is going to be the same. So the first step will be to specify a category and a description. You can add in whatever text you want for this. Next, we need to specify who can actually use this command because, of course, we don't want everyone to be able to warn other people. So we have two different ways to do this. The first is with a simple permissions check. In this case, I have a standard administrator. So you have to be a Discord admin in order to run this command. Another option specifically for one of keys commands is to specify require roles as true. This will force server owners who are using your bot to say what roles can use this command before it can actually be ran. We're then going to specify slash as true because I'm wanting to use slash sub commands and I don't want to be using legacy commands at all. And then I'll specify test only as true and this will make it so this will create a guild based slash command for every test server we specified when initializing one off keys commands. Of course, we want to do this so we don't create global commands which might take up to an hour to register where slash commands are for a single guild but they register instantly which makes it perfect for development. We also want to specify guild only as true this will make it so it cannot be used within direct messages. And now we can specify what options we want within our slash command. So each object within this array is going to be its own subcommand. So we'll specify the type for the first element as subcommand. And then we'll say the name is going to be add. This will be the exact subcommand that we see right here when it comes to list, add, and remove. So we're specifying the add subcommand here, which will actually give a user a warning. We can add in a description. Of course, you can add in anything you want. And then because this is a subcommand, we're going to add in different options, which will be the actual properties that we'll see. For example, right here, we'll see user. Here we see user and reason. And here we see user and ID. Those are the things we're going to add inside of our options array. The first one is going to be a user. And I'm specifying the type here as user in all uppercase. That way I can easily tag people when using the command. And of course, we have a description and required as true. The next option is going to be a string, which will be the reason. And of course, we have a description and required as true here as well. Now I'm going to add in another object to this options array. This will be the main options array here and not the internal options array because this will be a different subcommand. So we have type of subcommand. The name is remove. And of course, we have our description and our options just like the other subcommand. Now the first option here will be a user, the same exact thing as before. But this time we don't have a reason but instead we have an ID because this will be something that we use to actually delete the ID from our database. We're then gonna have our third and final subcommand here. So we'll specify type as subcommand. The name will be list. And of course, description and options will be provided. In this case, we only need one option, which will be the user, because this is of course just listing all of the warnings for the user and not adding or removing them. Next, we're gonna create a callback function, which will be asynchronous. And this will be the function that is invoked every time a user actually runs this command. Now within one of keys commands, we have this object here. And within this object, we have a bunch of different properties which we can destructure. In this use case, we need access to the guild. We need access to the member. And for clarity, we're going to rename this to staff. And we also need access to the interaction. So the first step is to access which slash command was actually ran 
this is going to return a string which will either be list specified by the name or remove or add. So whichever slash command the user ran, we will then get this as a string inside the subcommand variable. We then want access to the user and keep note that here I used get subcommand and here I'm using get user. This is important because that's the type of variable we specified. For example, with list, we have the type of user right here. And it's also very important that this string that we're passing in matches the exact string within our options. For example, lowercase user right here. This is why I specified the user in all lowercase like this for every instance of the user, no matter which subcommand we're actually going to be using. Then of course we have our reason and we have our ID. Now, obviously the reason and ID are only there whenever we're going to be adding or removing a warning. So these might be null or undefined depending on which subcommand we're going to use. That's why we can add in a simple if else if chain to see which subcommand we're actually going to be using. Obviously, we're just checking for add, remove, and list. But if you add in additional functionality, you can add in an extra else if statement here. So starting off on the add functionality, we are going to create a new document in the warn schema collection. And then we are going to return that document into a constant called warning. Now, what do we put inside of this document? Well, if you remember the schema back here, we had access to user ID, guild ID, reason, and staff ID, which are all required strings. So we need to pass all four of these into our new document. So here I'm passing all these in. Now, after we've created the warning, we're going to want to return an object. And within warn off keys commands, we can specify custom as true. This will tell us to use all the properties of this object inside of a response to our interaction. In this case, I'm going to add in a simple string that says added warning with the ID to the user. And I'm going to tag them. However, I don't want this to actually notify them. So I'm going to pass in allowed mentions as an object and pass in an empty users array. So this will actually tag them like normal, but they won't be notified. Next, we're going to take a look at the remove option. And here we're going to use find one and delete and pass in the ID, which we were given right here. We're then going to return an object similar to add. So we'll pass in custom as true. We'll then pass in content such as removed warning ID from the user. And just like before, we're going to specify that we do not want to actually notify this user of this message. Now, the last step is to use the list functionality. In this case, we're going to try and access all of the warnings from our collection by using the find method. We have to pass in the user ID and the guild ID to only return information that we want. So we'll go ahead and pass those in here. And then all the warnings for the specified user within the guild that we're running the command in should be returned into the warnings constant. I'm now going to create a string with a let because I do plan on changing the string and I'll call this description because this will be the description we'll use in our embed. So here we're going to tag the user, but now I want to loop through all of the warnings and add onto this each individual property of the warnings. So I'll use a for of loop and loop through the warnings one at a time. The first thing I want to do is add the ID to the warning. I then want to add the date to the warning and I'm using created at here which is automatically generated for us because if we go back to our schema here, I specified timestamps as true, which will mean that created at and updated at timestamps will be generated for us automatically. I'm also going to use two local string here. This will specify the exact time and date in a human readable format. But a very important note here is that this will be defaulted to the time zone that your machine is on. So if you're running this locally, then it will be your local time. If you're renting a VPS and you're hosting that elsewhere, it will be the time zone of that VPS. So you may want to specify a specific time zone after this. That is up to you and your own use case though. Next, I'm going to tag the staff who is going to be responsible for giving that warning. And then finally, I'm going to add on the reason and I'm going to add on an extra forward slash in, which if you don't know, these represent a new line. Then I'm going to create an embed and I'm going to set the description equal to the description string, which we just created. And finally, I'm going to simply return that embed and one of keys commands will detect what this is and just simply respond with the embed. So let's go ahead and try out the bot. I can do forward slash warn and let's first start by listing all the warnings from my user because I did add some when developing the code initially. So here we have four different warns. Let's go ahead and try removing one. In this case, hello. I can copy this ID. I can then do warn remove, pass in the user and then the ID. It says it removed it. Now, if I do one list and tag the user again, we now no longer see that. And of course, we want to make sure we can actually add warns. So I can add a warn to myself. I will then say testing for the video number two. If I run this, I can then do one list, tag myself. 
and here we see the fourth one, which I just added. Want to improve your Discord bot even further? Click here to check out my other Discord tutorials.